Hi everyone and welcome to Feywood. So I'm going to do my very first tag video today. I've never done one of these. Um, I kept seeing different tags and thinking, oh I should do a tag video, but none of them quite seemed like something that either fit my channel or that um, I could really answer all the questions or various things like that that I'd seen so far. So um, anyway, I did a little digging and I found a creative tag. So I think they just called it creative process tag um, and it seems to have been um, developed by the Overall Adventures channel. Um, so I'll link them in my description box. And they had a series of, um, I think it's 13 questions or so about being a creative person. So I'm going to just go through them. I have to be honest, I haven't actually like sat down and, you know, worked out answers to all these questions or anything. Um, it's going to be a bit on the fly, but I guess that will be interesting, hopefully, because you'll get to see my instant, you know, answers to the questions and things like that. Um, and they had some really good questions in uh, the tag. All right, so the first question is, what do you create? Now, that's a, quite a broad area for me because I've, I create and have created so many things. Um, primarily, I'm a visual artist, so I guess that's the best way to break it down. Um, I did start in a fine arts area, um, but with a real interest always in illustration. And um, I did also like sculpture when I was doing my fine arts studies and really enjoyed that that subject but I've I guess I create a bit of everything um, I did start very much with drawing and illustration and painting and that sort of thing and then from there moved into creating jewelry um, I did make some crafts and things along the way but it's been most recently that I've expanded and become very inspired by a lot of things to do with costumes um, to do with other creative like craft projects um, I've really enjoyed you know working on things in the studio for example that you guys have seen um, but I really do like costumes as well and um, everything that is you know fantasy or whimsical um, I'm sort of drawn to all those sorts of things so across the across the gamut really and the next question is what do you need to create um, I guess it's anything really um, I just always need to have something creative on the go I have for the most part for the last probably 10 maybe even 15 years it's been predominantly jewelry that I've created so I have mainly jewellery supplies and things that I, you know, use and have worked on. I haven't done any illustration for the longest time. Um, and that was just for time factor. But honestly, as long as I'm creating something, you know, and um, that can be so many different things. I, I tend to get inspired easily all the time by various things and go off on different tangents so half the trouble is just trying to finish projects um, and they can be anything but as long as I have something creative in my life then you know I'm okay uh, then the next question is coffee or tea um, I'm both but if I had to you know pick just one it would definitely be coffee I love coffee. Um, I particularly love, you know, a good latte. Um, absolutely love that. At the moment, it's a soy latte. Um, but yeah, love love my coffee in the morning. Can't start my day without coffee, and would really just prefer not to even talk to people before coffee. Um, I am a coffee fanatic. Absolutely love it. Hope never to give it up. I know, like some people are you know, cutting out the caffeine or whatever. I'm like, nah, don't you take my coffee from me. Um, yeah, love coffee, but also I like tea. In fact, I I have a tea right here. Quite a big cup, I know, but um, this is a chai tea, just an instant chai tea. 
So usually in the afternoon I'll have a tea. So I generally have a coffee in the morning and a tea in the afternoon. Um, this question just says night or day as in do you like to create in the night or in the day? Uh, now for me historically I was a night owl and it used to be that I would create at night and into the wee hours of the night as well. Um, since I've been with my husband he's more of a morning person and you know we've both improved like our sleeping habits a lot because both of us used to be shift work for a while so these days we get really tired really early so I don't do any of the into the wee hours stuff anymore so I'd say both um, for me the mornings I don't usually create early in the morning um, that's mainly because you know I have a bit of a routine I usually exercise um, uh, or sometimes at, I'm at work um, but if I'm home I exercise eat breakfast um, take some time to rest a little bit before I start my day but I do get up very early so that's all usually done by maybe 8 30 and then from that point onwards um, I might start doing creative things it depends on what other things I need to do. Um, I try and do the things that like I don't love doing which are the non-creative things first before I get stuck into doing you know the fun creative stuff and then once I've you know done everything I have to do then I'll start being creative um, and it's quite common for me to create in the night time as well uh, particularly when I'm working on a you know big necklace um, I'll be having my beads next to me while we watch TV and I'll often create then but during the day I'll do a lot of stuff in the studio so a lot of the um, bigger projects that you really just can't do in front of the TV. Uh, now the next question is where do you find inspiration? Uh, now I have been thinking about doing a video about inspiration um, and my thoughts on it and how I get inspiration and that sort of thing so if you want a more in-depth dedicated video to inspiration let me know and I'll be happy to have a chat about what I think about inspiration and how I keep myself inspired um, but briefly speaking I try and surround myself with a lot of inspiring things um, you guys have probably seen my studio if you've watched my videos so the studio is something that is almost an artwork itself that I keep adding to but um, I think you know surrounding yourself with things that inspire you definitely helps um, if I'm doing a certain project I try and digest a lot of um, inspirational things about what I'm doing um, I'm a funny funny one though I try if I'm creating say a big necklace that's um, I don't know ocean themed I'm just making up stuff um, for an example but say I was doing that I would try not to look at other people's necklaces for inspiration I'd be more trying to look at um, other you know things from the sea oceans mermaids um, movies pictures blah 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 I try not to look at other exact types of things that I'm trying to create if that makes sense because I don't want to be too informed by other people's work and you know then it starts being a bit too close to other people's um, interpretation of that theme and that sort of thing so my inspiration I try to have I try to think about where I get my inspiration from if that makes sense because I think you know you can be influenced a bit too heavily by other people's work if they do something similar to yourself um, anyway I could talk about inspiration for ages but I'll leave it at that and um, yeah but I mean inspirations definitely something like you do need to keep stoking the fires to keep yourself going if you're trying to make a lot of you know keep creative and make a lot of stuff uh, do you have a routine or do you wing it now I don't know how to exactly interpret this I guess this is how you structure your day but I, I would be more interested to hear if people have a design oh, and uh, this is really going to depend on the type of creativity you do um, I think the, the lady that created this tag is more about uh, written 
word as inspiration um, as her like creative outlet so it wouldn't make sense to say design so hers would be routine um, but for me I guess do I design or do I wing it is kind of what I want to answer for visual arts um, and it really does depend for my larger pieces you guys know if you've watched my videos that I do have an art journal and so I will sit down and design things I try and keep my designs a bit loose because um, you know things develop and I want to be able to develop along with that and you know just have a bit of an overall um, guiding theme I guess of where I'm going with a piece but usually it's then revising and revising and revising along the way when I'm creating a big piece but I, I do a lot of background work so that you know I really have a, a clear direction but then if I'm making something smaller where you know inspiration is just suddenly struck and I feel like sitting down and making something then a lot of times it will be um, a simple inspiration theme like a mix of colors or whatever and there's no real design behind it um, aside from maybe this one concept that I'm trying to flesh out and see if it'll come into you know become anything um, so those ones I wouldn't sit down and sort of pre-design or what have you um, as far as if I have a routine with what I do in the studio or not I do to an extent and I probably will need to improve it it is a little bit difficult for me because um, I do have a chronic illness and some days um, I'm not able to do what I would plan out on like to do um, and some days I can so um, I but I do try to keep a routine a lot of my stuff that's routine is about um, looking after my own health um, so a lot of that routine gets built into my day and then um, from there I just try and make sure I've planned out my week to see you know do I need to film do I need to do thumbnails um, and my head do I need to try and I try and film my head for YouTube so that um, I have a bit of leeway if I'm having a, a bad health day um, then it's not so bad so in those ways I definitely do have a routine um, typical artist challenge so uh, from memory because I did watch her video um, I think because um, I, I kept thinking this was like a challenge you give yourself um, about being creative but um, I think it's actually more some challenges that you might face as an artist um, so I mean I just touched on one for me which is um, chronic illness is definitely something that impacts my ability to create um, particularly for YouTube because you know I originally wanted to do a lot more funny videos because um, you know I, I like to joke around and um, you know be quite humorous in life but a lot of times once I get in front of the camera um, you know I, if I'm not feeling well I, it's really hard to go to that place so that's been a challenge for me and obviously just for any sort of creativity if you're not feeling well then it's it can be difficult um, artist challenges I guess you know one for me is is just time really um, I feel like I have so many ideas in my head and um, not enough time to do them so uh, it's then trying to prioritize what are the ones that I most want to do and um, these days it's becoming even more challenging because you know like I haven't found a balance where I have time to create jewelry anymore now that I'm doing YouTube and so uh, that side is suffering and you know originally I started this thinking oh maybe I can you know um, promote my own jewelry as well as be on YouTube and all of that sort of thing as well um, but it hasn't really worked out that way and uh, you know I haven't had time to stock anything in the shop I don't have time to do custom work so I've had to knock some 
custom requests back and say, look, I, I just don't have time, guys. So I just, I don't, um, I only have time to create when I can fit things in and, and so custom work, you really need the time to be able to devote. It takes like three times as long to make a custom piece for someone and usually you have to order things in specially. Um, you have to, you know, go back and forth with what they want. It's a lot more involved and, and difficult. So I don't do custom work anymore. So um, yeah, I think my biggest challenge right now is like having time. Uh, what are your role models? Um, now, I don't know, I have so many people that I admire. Uh, obviously, for me, if you've watched my videos, um, you'll know that I love Brian Froud. And he's always been my um, favourite artist since I was little. My dad introduced me to his work when I was very, very young. And I started you know, sketching a lot of his work because at the time that's when I was doing a lot of drawing and everything. So I just fell madly in love with all of his work and then in turn with the uh, movies that he was involved with, which are The Dark Crystal and The Labyrinth. Um, so I absolutely love those as well. Um, I also love the work of Alan Lee and um, he did um, a lot of the conceptual designs for Lord of the Rings and Alan and Brian have worked together on books and things in the past as well and their style to me is um, similar in that it's got this very organic um, style to it, not too stylized and you know um, very, I don't know, I want to say ancient, I feel like it's you know, um, but obviously fantasy driven and um, Oh, just brilliant, brilliant artists. Uh, obviously Wendy Froud as well because she um, sculpts a lot of the things that Brian um, draws. So they work so well together with their artwork, which is such a, a nice thing that, you know, their husband and wife and can share something that they're both passionate about. Um, and one other person, oh, well, a couple other people, I guess. Um... There's a lot of different um, jewellery designers, but the one that sort of got me started with jewellery was um, uh, Sherry Serafina, who does embroidery beadwork, and I bought a magazine, bead and button magazine with her work on it, and it was her work that really prompted me to start um, creating things, because I, until that point, didn't realise that you could do anything like that with jewellery. I really thought it was just um, stringing beads and um, which is you know fine if you're interested in that but I wasn't um, I wanted something more um, you know I wanted to be able to express more things with it and didn't realize that um, that was even a medium I guess until I saw her work so I uh, love her work and also uh, more recently but in a different sort of way uh, Mr. Finch who does sculptures and I read about him in the fairy magazine um, and I just really admired his um, lifestyle a lot of uh, in a lot of ways actually he sculpts a lot of very um, fantasy um, whimsical amazing stuff but he has this like great sort of uh, whimsical lifestyle as well and does it for a living and the way he described being able to create you know in his studio while it was raining and making these little I think spiders or something he was making yeah it's just like and his work is just brilliant so inspired so I love him as well all right and then it says favorite snacks for creativity uh, now on, on the daily um, I am very healthy I'm very careful with what I eat so I tend to mainly snack on unsalted nuts um, and, you know, fruit. Um, but I, I don't have too many snacks in the day. I'll have um, a handful of unsalted nuts in the morning and usually a tea in the afternoon is my snack, if you like. But if I wasn't trying to be healthy and was just eating stuff that, like, I love, um, I've got a real sweet tooth, so it would be, you know, chocolate or biscuits. Um, I really like the Kez's Kitchen Biscuits, and they're dairy-free. 
well some of them are dairy free and um, really nice uh, if I'm throwing health out the window entirely then I just have a Tim Tam <laughs> and, um, which is so naughty or uh, I don't know Ferrero Rocher's are a definite thing that I love um, yeah so definitely a sweet tooth now the next question is how do I um, push through creative blocks so it really depends on how blocked <laughs> um, if I'm creating a piece for example and I sort of come to a roadblock where I'm thinking I'm not sure where I'm taking this design you know sometimes something so precious to you as well that you really want to be careful where you take it because you um, don't want to ruin the progress you've made to that point and that sort of thing so if it's that type of roadblock then I'll usually put put a pause on it you know um, if I'm not sure where to take it then I usually will sit with the piece and not actually add on to it but I might um, you know pull out some different colored beads and hold those up to it I might you know I might even do a couple of stitches of something and see what I think of it and then maybe pull it out and I might even do that a few times to see what do I like pull it out if I'm really not sure sometimes you know if, if it's sort of getting towards the end of the day anyway I might just put the piece away because um, sometimes when you're not immediately looking at something but it's in the back of your mind it's sort of the ideas sometimes form for you you know as you're just sort of not even really thinking about it it just comes to you and the next time you pick it up you might have a clear idea of where you want to go with it um, that's one thing I do is just to step away from that piece if that piece is just a little bit stuck um, and I'm not sort of able to progress I might you know step away and do something else if I'm just in general across the board not inspired and not having any joy and not really sure what to do um, I tend to then either create components um, so for me you know um, maybe beaded beads maybe um, beaded ropes maybe um, cabbing uh, like beading around a cab all sorts of different things that don't require any design um, decisions because that's really what the problem is it's like I can't make a decision on what I want to do on a thing you know but those components that don't require any sort of design decisions that you can just create some things to use later um, I'll tend to make things like that so even if it's not for a particular project I'll just make some things maybe that might be something I do so that later um, I might use those things in another piece like I might make beaded flowers I might you know just um, do some bezels around beads whatever it is some things that could be used down the track that's one thing that I might do um, another thing that I might do is try something new so um, if I'm feeling like I need to really wedge myself out of a rut creatively um, I might try and learn something new and something creatively new um, so for beadwork for example if I'm just really not sure what to do I'll go and get a magazine or put, pick up one of my books and find a um, project that I haven't tried before and make it because um, it that sort of tends to give me ideas and you know give me um, something else to focus on and then in the meantime I usually find that my creativity comes back or it's just you know that process revives it again or whatever um, so usually I usually won't do like a full-on end-to-end -end project it's usually learning a new stitch new technique something like that that I can use in my own work um, but sometimes it's a project and that has new techniques in it or a different combination of techniques that I haven't done before and that might be something that I can bring into my own work you know and different stuff like that I find helps me get through creative blocks uh, what's my ideal creative day um, 
Well, you know, I'm pretty simple, I think. Uh, I just love a day where I don't have anything that I have to do, um, and ideally a day where I'm feeling really well, um, and I can spend the whole day in my studio creating things, or if it's a beadwork project, then maybe I'll sit um, on the couch with my beads and create something and, you know, watch you know, awesome videos or something like that. Um, I particularly love it when it's cold weather. I prefer creating in the winter. Um, I hate the sweltering Australian summers when you're trying to create things. It's, it's a bit intense. Um, winter is my perfect time for creating. So I, I find that I really love creating in winter. Um, but another thing that I love to do and I do, um, quite often is I'll have a few friends around who are also creative and we'll have a creative day together. So, you know, we'll, um, and usually we'll have a nice lunch and, you know, sometimes we'll even have a champagne and look, honestly, sometimes there's very little creative things being actually done. Um, and it's more about, you know, showing the others what you're up to and what you, what you're inspired by and, um, yeah, it's it ends up stoking the coals even if you're not actually creating something. Um, so I, I love those days as well. So that that would probably be my ideal sort of creative days. What would be my advice to young artists? Do you know what? These days I just keep saying to anyone creative, go and read or slash listen to the audiobook of Elizabeth Gilbert um, the big magic that has everything that you could possibly need to hear as an artist um, all of the things I wish someone told me when I was younger you know about how to get past your fears and um, finishing things that you start and the idea of where ideas come from and how they you know are almost an um, entity of themselves um, the different types of creative things that, or the different types of things you think creativity will bring you as well are talked about in that book, which I find interesting, you know, this, um, expectation on, or hope for creative things to bring, um, monetary benefits and, you know, the idea of removing that strain from creativity so that it's not um, burdened by that and um, I don't know there's just so many nuggets of wisdom and like um, her concept of a shit sandwich which I love which is basically just saying no creative endeavor or endeavor in general um, comes without some crap that you've got to deal with so um, you just have to sort of decide which oh how did she put it a which shit sandwich you'd be happy to eat. Um, so, you know, you love this thing so much that you would do it regardless. And then this one is sum up your creative process in one sentence. That's quite difficult. Um, I guess for me, I would say try trying to create magic or trying to uncover the magic that's right in front of me. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I feel like sometimes when I'm creating things, they were already there. So, you know, I, and a creative person might understand what I mean, but, you know, when you get into that flow and you just feel like, you know what, you know where the piece is going, you know what's there and what you're going to get, and you're just taking the time it needs to actually uncover it it's almost like it's already manifested but you're just taking those steps to you know uncover it um that that's my sort of process and um or just creating magic as well you know i i talk about magic because i just feel like there's certain things in life that um have that air of power and mystery and um, mysticism about them and creativity has this way of tapping into it and um, 
you know, I try and create things that will spark that for other people. Um, you know, hopefully they sm spark those things for me. So I'm just trying to create things that, you know, will spark a bit of magic for other people in their life. And the last one, which says optional, um, is do you have any artistic quirks? <sighs> Let me think. I mean, I probably have a ton that I'm not even aware of. Uh, I know that I, I do need to put everything in order after I complete a big project. Um, you know, I'll make a huge, huge mess of my studio when I'm making a necklace or a collection or something like that. It'll become a big, like a bomb hit it. In fact, if you guys could see what's around me right now, it's a similar thing because there's a project on, on the horizon. Um, and then before I can start anything else, everything's got to be put away and everything's got to be cleaned and moved and set right. I can't start again until everything's, you know, where it should be. Um, and I'm not by no means like, you know, super clean, organized person. Um, it, I'm more, I don't know, more like everything's kind of on display, but it still needs to be where it has to go for me to feel like I can start creating again. Um, that's the only one that comes to mind at the moment. I've probably got other ones. I'm sure they'll come to mind after I've finished filming this, but that's the main one that comes to mind is just like this sort of cycle of, you know, explosion mess and then, you know, diligent cleaning <laughs> that happens in my studio constantly. So, um, anyway, I'll leave it at that. I don't even know how long this video is once I edit it. Um, hopefully not a million years long because I, I do tend to chat, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and listening to my answers to these questions. Um, and I hope you guys will give this tag a go. Um, you know, let me know if you do. I'd love to hear other people's responses to this tag. Um, and, you know, thank you again to the original tag creator, uh, which is Overall Adventures. And as I mentioned, I'll link them as well. Um, make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see more from me. And do let me know if you want to um, see a video uh, more about inspiration in depth. Um, as I said, I was thinking of doing a video on that and it'd be good to know if that's something you guys are into. Um, and otherwise, I will let you go and I'll see you next time in Feywood. Bye guys.